Speaking of Bitcoin, the daily close happened about 31 minutes ago on yesterday's candle. And uh, yesterday's candle had a high of 45,922. So basically just under $46,000, but the close was just under 45 at 44,970. Now, a couple different things here that are, are kind of important for this breakout. I think some people, when they look at this chart, might be like, uh-oh, we've kind of peaked here for Bitcoin and we'll head towards the cycle low, which on average, if it's full 60 days, would be around the 13th of January, which if we did sell into that, which is possible, right, that would be, um, what do you call it? People would assume that we had sold the news on the ETF approval if we get approved between the 8th and the 10th. Uh, and then, right, I do expect another increase of at least one to three weeks in that next 60 day cycle, um, which, you know, if we came down and, and hit uh, this trend line here at about forty two, forty three thousand dollars $43,000, you know, then we can make a move up there. That's one possibility, but more likely we're probably going to gravitate towards that 47, 500, 48, 500 level by around that time of ETF approval, maybe on Tuesday, January 9th, a week from today. I did the calculation because we're on episode 662 um, for the Cultivate Crypto Show. We maybe, if, 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 this is a big if, if the ETF gets approved on the 9th of January, right? Right between that period where we expected that could be the cycle high for this 60 day cycle. And if, and if it is, it's going to be on Cultivate Crypto episode 666, the mark of the beast, which would be fitting for Wall Street approving a spot ETF. So, uh, and then from there, we can get uh, more of a pullback. So either we pull back now over uh, the course of the next two weeks, or uh, we pump up a bit here over the next week, and then we pull back into that uh, mid-January point for a nice cycle low. And then I think we do get another move here into the end of January, early February, uh, at least depending on where the next cycle will take us. So um, we'll see here, but 80% uh, of the time, if Bitcoin makes a new cycle high, it's going to want to come higher. And since there's really uh, the main price is 48,500 on that 0 0.618, if you take the Fibonacci retracement from the high of the bull market to the bottom of the bear market, that's the number that I think Bitcoin is magnetizing itself towards. And we've been we talked about that through the entirety of 2023. That's the price that we've been looking for. And that's the price that's right around the corner, in my opinion, what, regardless of whether we dump into the ETF or pump into the ETF doesn't really matter quite so much. Uh, if we do take a look from an Elliott wave perspective, just in terms of this move that we've had here from September, then essentially your Elliott wave pattern here is uh, a wave one, two. Uh, there's some sub waves within here. We got the three. I believe the four is now complete and we get that fifth wave. And um, the interesting thing here is if you do take the Elliott wave or sorry, the Fibonacci retracement from the top of the three to the bottom, lowest part of the four and pull it across, you do get two numbers, uh, a few numbers here. You get uh, 47,500 as a FIB level that is likely to hit. Then you get 52, which is not really in line with any of the macro FIB levels, but then you get 56,600, uh, which is close to that 57,000, which would be the 0.786 on that macro $69,000 top to the bottom of the bear market of 15,500. That's your 0.786 retracement there. Um, so depending on how this wave five plays out um, will be interesting to see. But um, if we go closer into that wave four, this can give us some targets because if you look at this trend line here, this green line, if you look at that, not as a long-term trend line that it is, but a short-term trend line. And then you look at the top, you know, you basically have an ascending triangle. So if we look at the sub wave count of that wave four, you would have your nice A, B, C, and you actually have a bullish D wave breakout. Usually you get an E wave, and actually we could get a little bit of a fake out here on a D and then come back into that pattern for the E and then break out, but I think that's unlikely, right? Really what we're seeing here is a D wave breakout. That E wave won't be coming down for that five-point touch, and if on the D wave breakout, when you have a corrective wave, 
that has those five points that breaks out on the fourth one instead of after the fifth, that usually means it's a bullish move. And so uh, you can take the high of this uh, price action to the low of this price action, which is uh, 40,200. Uh, well, actually, yeah, low is 40,200 essentially uh, to the high here of 44,700. So about a uh, $3,500 difference. You take that on the breakout here uh, of 44,700, uh, 44, and that easily brings you to about $47,000. So your target here um, for that wave four breakout is at least $47,000 uh, going into next week. Um, and then again, up to the max of that $57,000, I don't think into next week, but by the end of the month of January. So uh, let's see how it all plays out. You know, there's gonna there's a lot of twists and turns that can happen in in the in between. Um, but um, yeah, I do think we have still some more upside here to go um, on this move. And uh, uh, yeah, we'll just keep it at that for right now. We'll go into more detail later when we talk about moves going into tw into twenty five. Ethereum here at twenty three sixty. Uh, on the weekly chart, if we turn on the CC algo, right, it has held support here um, on the sell signal, on the sell setup that did not hit. We held support there at that 2200 level. Price has gone up since then, had a lot of volatility, but has gone up. And now we're in that area of resistance of the previous candles that Ethereum is uh, working to break out of. So uh, if Bitcoin does head towards 47,000, uh, or 48,000, I do think you see Ethereum uh, around that time, either next week or later in this month, uh, around 2,700. Uh, and it's high, I think the the peak here for Ethereum, uh, if Bitcoin were to hit like that 57,000 mark, you could see Ethereum here hitting uh, all threes, right? 3,333 or 3,400 max um, during that period of time. So Ethereum could see some really interesting gains here in the Q1 as well, or maybe the beginning of Q1. So uh, again, we know that as long as Bitcoin is above its 20 week moving average, <coughs> which if we turn on our Bollinger Bands, just to, you know, I'll, I'll delete this here a bit. If we turn on our Bollinger Bands, that 20 week moving average is at $34,039. So basically $34,000, as long as Bitcoin's price stays above there, then essentially, um, altcoins have the permission to pump, right? So as long as we're holding above there, altcoins can pump. So even uh, right now, uh, things are looking pretty, pretty nice. And if we do turn off our, uh, I don't want to turn off everything. I just wanted to turn off everything except for the green lines. But we do see this trend line here that goes all the way back to the lows of 2015. Um, you see that as an area that Bitcoin is threading. And currently the last one month, we've been using it as support. Um, and the higher end of that going into, let's say, February is that fifty-five to $57,000 range on that trend line. If you were to look at the lows of the summer lows uh, of the last bull market right for here in uh, 21, summer of 21, and then the lows here of January of 22, you take that trend line across and that should be your main resistance Um if you are following the retracement here from the uh, higher end to the lower end of price, pulling it across. These are the numbers I was referring to before of the 0.618 here at 48,500 and the 0.786 at 50,526. Um, so just keep those two areas in mind as we uh, come up here in January. <clears throat> 